You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. So, we're obviously not done talking about the draft, but we're going to step away from the PFF analysis. We'll get into some other stuff. Um, but I want to get back to a couple things that have been kind of left in the lurch. Some of the news is a little bit older, but I still want to talk about it. Um, the other thing that... I want to talk about is something that I, I, maybe it's just coincidence that I keep seeing it on Twitter, but there is this recurring thing that I keep seeing stating that um, cornerback is a higher priority, a higher need than linebacker. Now, I've, I've been on this podcast saying that I don't know cornerback isn't a need, but I was coming from the perspective of we shouldn't be putting it in the category of we're good. Not at all from the category of this is a priority. So, in other words, if we draft a corner, that's fine. I don't, I don't care what... There isn't a position that we draft where I go, why would you do that? There just isn't. I mean, it, with the exception, maybe, of punter, I guess. Even a kicker. I, I, you know, Most people would freak out because you just don't draft them. But just from the standpoint of, do we need to be looking at that? Yeah, at, at some point, we should be... As I've said, we should be constantly getting primarily undrafted free agent, but whatever. Always replacing positions. Always. Always, 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 always. Just take talented people that you think genuinely can play this game. Especially when you get into the 6th and 7th rounds in undrafted free agency. Anybody that you think can step on a football field and play football well, try to get them. Just do your best to get them, because once you get to that point, there's a lot of guys that you're... You don't have a big list left. So I don't care if it's quarterback, cornerback, running back, Fullback, punter, kicker, long snapper, edge rusher, I don't care. Because this game is all about replacements, and you're constantly trying to find people that can play. Because if you can find anybody that can play at a level that is starter caliber or rotational whatever, that's a huge win, regardless of position. I'm more or less focusing on, okay, let's talk first round. (sighs) If let's just say because as I've said the, the way generally teams draft is based on tiers right so when it's your time to draft you have your and I don't you know I don't know how teams break down their individual tiers but there's ranking systems and within those ranking systems are tiers so you've got your Pro Bowl you know you've seen it before where you get between this grade and this grade is a you know potential Pro Bowler type thing whatever so you draft based on guys that are in your highest tier right. If there were, let's say, two guys available, one of the, and, and they're, um, I don't know, the, the one below Pro Bowler, high-end starter, whatever, there's two guys left. One of them is a linebacker and one of them is a corner. What do you think they take? And I, it's not that easy of a, of a question just based on the, um, pos- the, the position value. In other words, corners are much more valuable than linebackers, especially in Green Bay where they still don't put that high of an emphasis. But I just, I don't, I don't, I can't get on that bandwagon that that's more important than linebacker. I don't care that we don't generally value linebackers that much. I'm just, I'm not, I can't come that far. So I want to kind of dig into that a little bit. And who knows, maybe I'll change my mind. <laughs> Which, funny enough, um, I haven't gotten a negative review in a while. The last time I did, that was one of the things that was highlighted in that negative review is I come into this with a point of view, and then I change my mind as I'm talking about it. Sometimes that happens, man. I'm sorry. By the way, that that review was greatly appreciated because I think the quality of the show went up exponentially because after being angry for about 30 minutes, I realized, you know what? Dude's got a lot of good points here. I should probably uh, up my game a bit, and I did. So thank you for that. And no, I'm not encouraging negative reviews. Don't do it. You have my, you literally have my phone number. It's in the description. Just tell me, hey, your show stinks, and here's what you can do to fix it. I'll take it into consideration. Just don't, don't put it in the reviews. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. You're, you, you know, I'm sure you can be a big boy and confront me head on. Just, just tell me. It's fine. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not really 40. That's a, it's a thing. It's on the internet. I'm a man. I'm 40. It's glorious every time. Anyways, um, something else I wanted to mention. I don't want to get too sappy about it. But I, I, I am 
genuinely surprised at the level of people that have stuck with um, Patreon, considering everything that's going on right now. The level of financial uncertainty right now. I would have to assume supporting a podcast would be low on that list. And so I fully expected to lose roughly half of my supporters. I think I lost five, and I gained one. Shout out to Spencer. So what I want to do as a thank you is I have two draft guides, and I want to give two draft guides away. I haven't picked names yet, but I just I want to put it out there. I'm going to do the first drawing, and that person will get to decide which of the two they want. Then I'm going to do a second drawing, and that person will get the other drawing, the other uh, draft guide. The two that I have right now, um, one is the Cheesehead TV draft guide, which I, I at first I said I don't want to get that guide. I want it to be from a, a draft source, not saying that they don't know what they're talking about. That's not true at all. But, I you know, it just it feels like I would rather do that. However, I thought a Packers-centric draft guide would be kind of awesome. So I was like, all right, let's do that. So I got that, and then I went to the other... I guess, end of the spectrum, and I got the Matt Waldman Rookie Scouting Portfolio, which is a very well-renowned, very well-known scouting guide. And so those are going to be the two options. And again, we'll do two drawings. I'm going to do one. I'll reach out to that person. They'll tell me which one they want. And then I'll do one more, and they'll be able to get the other draft guide. Again, just as a thank you for, for hanging in there. One other comment. I've had some people reach out more or less wanting to do sort of one-time donations. I will put a link in the description for this, but there's a site called, it's like Coffee. It's kind of like Buy Me a Coffee, but it's a separate website. It's K-O-F-I, but that is a place where you essentially, quote-unquote, buy me a coffee. It's, it's, for whatever reason, set up for $3. So if you buy me one, it's a $3 donation. You can buy two or whatever, however you want to do it. But I just wanted to set that up as an option for people to do one-time donations because I know a lot of people are looking at, you know, Venmo, which sometimes gives complications because that's supposed to be for friends. And I like you guys, but, you know, Venmo has strict criteria. And then uh, PayPal has fees, which some of these donations are low enough that it almost erases the donation. Uh, This coffee site doesn't have fees, which is another big bonus. And I'm actually, to be completely honest, considering moving entirely off of Patreon over to this thing. But I kind of want to see how it goes first. Because Patreon has, I don't want to say hefty fees, but I would get significantly more if I moved everybody over there. So, just an option. Anyways, why don't we go ahead and take a break and start looking at some of this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop. That's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place. And you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal, independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. All right, so a little bit of a uh, quick lightning round here as far as news roundup from around, uh, I guess, the NFC North. 
So the Vikings added, um, and this is from about a week ago, but Tajay Sharp, Anthony Zettel, and an XFL player by the name of uh, Demarcus Gates. So Tajay Sharp is actually a uh, an interesting prospect. He kind of fits the mold of what the Packers have been doing as far as a young guy who kind of broke out in his third year. So it is sort of interesting. It, it, it had uh, been asked of me, why do you think the Packers weren't interested in him, especially considering his Lafleur ties? That may have not been the exact question, but either way, it was a good point because you kind of look at it and you go, oh man, shoot, that might have been a good option. However, if Matt Lafleur had confidence that this was, f- at least for the Packers and what they want to do, a good option, there probably would have been more movement on this, um, especially considering how ridiculously low of a contract he got. It's se- uh, $675,000. Actually, that's just dead cat. It's a, it's a million bucks is what it is. So it's a one-year, $1 million offer. There have to be very serious concerns about Tajay Sharp, the fact that he lasted this long and only got a million dollars for a 25-year-old wide receiver who had a pretty good last year to only get a million bucks. And again, Matt LaFleur has intimate knowledge about Tajay Sharp and decided, nah, I'd rather have Devin Funchess. Speaks volumes to me. So I, you know... I'll give credit to the Vikings. I, in my opinion, it's a good pickup. You get a 25-year-old guy who had a good year last year. When you need that number three to replace, you know, basically your number two. So I mean, you're, you're moving backwards. But in terms of value, I, I don't think this is a bad move at all. I'm not scared of him, but um, it's, a, it's a solid value for the Vikings. Um, as far as Anthony Zettel, he's been around a little while. He's he's nothing really to be worried about. He's not a very good football player, and anybody picked up from the XFL, I don't have very much faith in. So I'm not worried about uh, DeMarcus Gates. Switching gears a little bit, there was a report apparently that there was another wide receiver the Packers were looking at, and it was, I mean, it's pretty, I shouldn't say that. There there was a a pretty wide spectrum as far as wide receivers they were looking at. So there's Funchess, there was some other sort of high-end, you know, Brashad Perriman looking at getting a little bit more money or a lot of bit more money. Apparently they were also looking at DeMarcus Robinson. He was a fourth-round pick back in 2016, Um, drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. He's still with the Kansas City Chiefs. My assumption is this is sort of the low end. In other words, if you're going to get a guy that gets a DeMarcus, excuse me, get a uh, Tajay Sharp contract, sort of a $1 million kind of deal, this would have been that. The biggest problem I have is that based on what I'm looking at here, and bear in mind, he's on a team that has a quarterback that can absolutely get him the ball. He's had some big games. Right against Oakland, six targets, six receptions, 172 yards, and two touchdowns. But um, that's about it. He ended the year with four touchdowns. His next biggest game was Week 10 against ten, t- uh, Tennessee, 56 yards, no touchdowns. He ended the season with a 54.9 overall grade. So my assumption is you're just kind of, kind of weighing your options. And when you've got Perriman on the one end and, and probably Emmanuel Sanders, those are the high end, but also want more money. Then you've got Demarcus Robinson, and then you've got Funches, who's kind of in the middle. He's not as, as desirable as some of these other guys, but he's not as expensive as them either. Um, and so when you weigh all your options and you look at how little Funches took, even though you could probably get Demarcus Robinson for less, in terms of overall value, Funches is probably the best value. And again, not coming from a Funches fan, I think he's the best value. Demarcus Robinson would have been a pick that absolutely makes me upset. Because at least Funchess, you're getting sort of a Lazard caliber player. Demarcus Robinson is a Trevor Davis caliber player. And again, we have plenty of guys that can play at that level. And um, again, I'm, I'm well past the days of saying, well, he could come over here and based on the system, based on familiarity, based on Aaron Rodgers, and try to give all these things that are suddenly going to make this a great player. I'm just, I'm done doing that. Not saying it's impossible, but have we, ri- who have we ever seen that from? What is one player? Because every time we get a player from somewhere, we give him some kind of a bonus. He's going to thrive in our system. He's going to be much better because of Aaron Rodgers. He's that, 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 that. Who, who? I mean, Julius Peppers did take a step forward, but if you kind of look at it, it would be more like he took a, he was sort of linear with a massive dip in Chicago for whatever reason, probably because he was playing out of position for a long time. So that you could say that that was a, uh, that was one. I mean, what Charles Woodson? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But the bottom line is, you're not going to take a bad player, bring him to Green Bay, and suddenly make him a good player. That's just not really going to happen. 
So again, I'm content with Funches. They were better options, but um, for the money, and we, we couldn't really afford that level of, of you know, paramin type money, I think Funches was probably the best option. But still interesting that they were at least some to some degree entertaining that. I would not have even considered um, bringing him on. Why is this so quiet? Let me turn that up a little bit. Is that, is that a little bit But It's still quiet. So weird. I apologize for being so quiet. It's very weird. Anyways, I'll try to speak louder. The uh, Chicago Bears added another quarterback. They have re-signed Mr. Tyler Bray. Doesn't really mean much of anything. Foles is going to be the guy, unless they decide to stick with Mitch Trubisky. Either way, um, I expect Foles to be the guy eventually, and Mitch Trubisky to be a forgotten disaster in very short order. Now, I will say, and I have said this before, I I think this is a a decent deal um, for the Bears. That is, if you just look at what I think Nick value, Nick Foles' value is compared to what he's getting paid, I, I think it, it makes sense just from that standpoint. However, a couple issues. Number one, this is a, a... They've got him for three years. Now, I know quarterbacks tend to last longer, but this is a 31-year-old guy that essentially, in, in reality, he's, he's, it's a four-year deal that he signed with the Jaguars and the Bears traded for him. But anyways, they've got him for three more years. But in reality, this is a one-year contract. If this goes south, I mean, it's hard to quantify how much is being put on this. I don't think Nick Foles is going to completely bust out. I don't think he's going to have just a terrible, terrible season to the point where they're saying, I don't know what to do. But the nightmare scenario for the Bears is that Mitch Trubisky is now essentially to the point where we have to either let him go or offer him a very, very big contract. Nick Foles is on the hook for a, this year it's a $15.6 million cap hit, next year $20 million cap hit, but only $5 million in dead cap if you decide to let him go. Now maybe this answers itself if it's such a horrific season that they end up drafting early enough to get a top tier player, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anyone expects him to be that bad. And so the nightmare scenario is they don't want to keep Nick Foles, they don't want to keep Trubisky, And beyond that, again, it's a trade. Not only is this costing money, the trade is the biggest issue. And you say, well, it was only a fourth-round pick. No, you gave up a fourth so that you could pay him $20 million a year. So this is a fourth-round pick on top of this contract. Beyond that, a fourth-round pick is not insignificant for the Bears. The Bears do not have a first-round pick, they do not have a third-round pick, and now they don't have a fourth-round pick. Ryan Pace constantly giving away picks for older, washed-up, not-that-great players is out of control. It's wildly out of control. And again, now you don't have a quarterback because the young quarterback of the future was such a bust that you're basically replacing him. And now you bring in a veteran backup to take over. But you're giving away young, talented replacement guys in the draft so that you can fill a hole at quarterback. And you really just have two second round picks because once you get to the fifth round, the prospect of actually getting a starter caliber player completely plummet. And last year, you didn't really have any early enough picks to to make an impact outside of drafting a running back who looks like he's not going to be that good. So how many years in a row are we just not going to have any any quality player? And the idea that Foles is going to come in here and thrive, you understand, when he won the Super Bowl with the Eagles, that was with the Eagles. The other problem I have with this move is the fact that the Bears seem to think that they're still on the cusp. This is an all-in move. This is a, we don't need draft picks because we're, we're pushing in now. The only thing holding us back is Trubisky. That's not true. That was true in 2018. That was not true in 2019. This is just a bad football team. This is a top 10 defense, which is not that impressive. It just means top third. In other words, one in three teams are a top 10 defense. whoop de doo This is not an elite defense anymore. Khalil Mack had one of his worst years statistically ever. That should be concerning considering his age. He's 29. Now that's not the end of somebody's rope, and he still graded out fine. But it was the lowest grade of his career. It was the lowest amount of pressures since his rookie year. Lowest amount of sacks since his rookie year. His lowest amount of hits ever. And, uh, I don't know, relatively low amount of hurry. You know, even looking at, you know, his tackles have been down. His missed tackles have been through the roof the last two years. He Both years, the last two years, he's missed 11 tackles. He hasn't done that since his rookie year either. The last two years, his stops, which are high-quality, run-defended tackles, 
I mean, if you look at it starting at his rookie year, 48, 54, 52, 53, the last two years, 34. So this massive move that, that means you don't get anybody for a long time because you moved up for Trubisky and you gave away everything for Khalil Mack, those two moves. Khalil Mack is already beginning his descent. It's probably going to be a couple years before he's not that great of a player. He's still a very good player, but he's 29. He's not going to get better from here. And your safeties are nowhere as good. Your corners are kind of a joke. Your linebackers are not as good as you had hoped. You've got Akeem Hicks on the inside who's overrated. He's good, but overrated, and he's kind of the only one. And your offense is a joke. Your offensive line is falling apart. Your running back was a terrible decision. You got rid of Jordan Howard because you just, for whatever reason, couldn't see getting him moving. I don't know why. He was a good running back. And then you replaced him with a guy who's very similar to Jordan Howard, but seemingly not as good. You keep paying and and going out in free agency and getting these washed up wide receivers, not including your number one. But but again, the the general idea that this is a team that's just on the cusp. But we're you are the Jaguars, by the way. This is exactly what the Jaguars did. The Jaguars were one quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl, but they had the wrong quarterback. And then their team kind of falls apart. Then they go out and get Foles. Foles isn't the answer. Not necessarily because he's terrible, but your team is just slowly eroding and falling apart. In other words, if you had had Foles instead of um, Blake Bortles, there's a good chance you win a Super Bowl. Same for the Bears. If you guys had Nick Foles instead of Mitch Trubisky when you were making that that run, it's it's not impossible that they at least made a much more serious run at a Super Bowl, at least beat the Eagles. But those days are gone, and you have to reevaluate where you are, not where you were two years ago. And so I'm, I'm happy as a Packers fan because you're misdiagnosing this. And maybe it's just because Ryan Pace is scared for his job and he doesn't want to have to go to his boss and say, look, uh, we missed and I tried. We were close, but we, we kind of got to re- rebuild this thing a little bit, which is hard to do because you gave away all your draft picks. But still, stop giving more away on this, this useless push to try to win a Super Bowl with a subpar team. So... It's true that the contract isn't terrible, but this is the wrong move for the Bears. This is not, you're, you're not there anymore. And again, you, you, you again don't have picks. Two second round picks isn't the worst thing in the world. And I, I hope, beyond hope, beyond hope, that they do something really dumb like package those two second round picks and move into the first. That would make me so unbelievably happy if they did that. Please move up and get a wide receiver. I don't think they, I don't even think Ryan Pace is that dumb, but I want him so badly to, to lose the opportunity to get two high round picks to package them up. That would, oh my goodness, that would make me, that would be the, the best thing in the world. In fact, I want the Packers to, to, to do it. I doubt that'll ever happen. I don't even, let's see if it's a good value. It's probably too much value to the Packers, but that would just, that would make me happy. We could offer them up something else. I, I just want to take that from them. In reality, they, they, they could actually move up for Minnesota. That's about where they can get is pick 22. Please, please, please let that happen. Anyway, sorry. Tangents. Tangents galore today. So yes, they got Tyler Bray, and um, I, I've already talked about my thoughts on their quarterback, but that's sort of an expanded version of that. The Bears also went out and paid for Jermaine Effetti. Now you might be thinking, okay, here they go, they're rebuilding their offensive line. You also look at it, I mean, if you're a Bears fan, you say, well, he was a first-round pick. This is true. You paid for a 25-year-old former first-round offensive tackle. If you remove that positive, ridiculous spin, you look at the fact that all these years of saying that Seattle has one of the worst offensive lines in football and they desperately need help, you're looking square at Jermaine Effetti when you're making that statement. I mean, you're looking at a lot of different guys, but that's one of the guys you look square in the eyes and say, yep, we need help. This is a terrible line. So I'm sure he didn't get much money, but this is this is a nothing move. This is the kind of stuff that when Ted Thompson did it, it drove me nuts. Although I don't think he ever got guys quite this bad. It was always a little bit closer to mediocre. This is just a terrible football player that they're paying money to. So that does no good. So don't worry, folks. They didn't just fix their offensive line. I hope I hope for just a play. They're like, you know what? I wonder if this guy can play. And and while Zadarius is out there, just put Jermaine Effetti out, out at right tackle. Just let him test the waters, see how it goes. He might be. He's probably great. I bet he's so good. <laughs> that Bobby Massey guy, he's, he's overrated. Put Effetti in there. Next to your right guard, whose name is literally Coward. <laughs> Effetti playing next to the coward. And no, not cowherd like the, the guy on uh, the radio or the, the TVs. C-O-W-A-R-D is his name. Effetti and the coward working against Mr. Zadarius. Oh, oh my goodness. Got some deep chills on that one, man. 
just gets me jacked. And by the way, Bobby Massey is not all that spectacular either. This offense, this team is terrible. Except for, obviously, Jimmy Graham they picked up. Guy is just a freak. Um, a couple of Lions mm, dealings. Um, Mr. Geronimo Allison is officially a Detroit Lion. This doesn't really mean much for either team. The Packers don't really lose much. The Lions don't really gain much. And um, just based on what the Lions have, I don't know that he gets that much playing time. The biggest thing he can offer the Lions is intel. That's about it. But the Lions weren't done there. They went out and got a uh, highly touted linebacker from back in 2017. Buffalo Bills picked him up out of Alabama in the second round, Mr. Reggie Ragland. Um, For whatever reason, he ended up in Kansas City. I don't know how that worked out. Bills drafted him and then they cut him right away. Second round. How did what happened here? That has to be the worst. I, I don't. I don't remember that. That has to be the worst thing ever. Picture this. You, you never ceases to ma- amaze me how bad some teams are. You draft. Uh, picture the line because it's possible for the Packers, right? Drafting, drafting a linebacker in the second round. He's not playing very well, so he ends up being third team linebacker. That's discouraging, right? It's unfortunate, but he's a rookie. Apparently, rather than just letting this thing play out, they traded him to the Chiefs for a fourth-round pick. Your second-round pick you gave up for a fourth-round pick before the season even started. He was drafted in 2017. August 28th, 2017, he got traded to the Chiefs. He was the 41st overall pick. That, that, is, that is horrible. To make matters worse, and granted, he hasn't had a very good career, but in his first year with the Kansas City Chiefs in 2017, he did a bang-up job. He was a good linebacker. Unfortunately for the Lions, 2018 and 2019, nowhere near as um, impactful. In fact, he's never really been a full-time starter. 2018, he played 655 snaps. That was the highest. This past year in 2019, 320. So, I mean, the, the, the Bills weren't entirely wrong. However, you drafted him in the second round. You're not getting out of this as far as being dumb. What could you have possibly seen up until August that makes you think... Um, he's never going to be a good football player that you didn't see prior to him coming to Buffalo. There had to have been something just devastating that happened on that football field where they're watching going, this is just never going to work. By the way, phenomenal tackler. And with as bad as the uh, Detroit Lions linebackers are, wouldn't be surprised if he gets a little bit of time. But either way, he's he's not good at stuff. So I'm I'm very happy to welcome him to the NFC North. Anyways, finally, again, I want to look at this uh, cornerback versus linebacker situation. Just purely looking at statistics, um, the Packers ranked 24th in yards per attempt rushing, 18th net yards per attempt passing. So, you know, statistics are kind of iffy to begin with. But in a general sense, they were better against the pass than, you know, against the run. If we look at football outsiders, because I know people get tired of me talking about uh, PFF, and they want football outsiders, whatever, it doesn't matter. Same conclusion. The Packers pass defense ranked ninth in the NFL. The rush defense ranked 23rd. If we switch over to PFF and look at coverage grades, the Packers were ninth, same as football outsiders. Run defense, PFF has the Packers 28th, one of the worst in the NFL. So there's very, 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 very little question where the problems are in Green Bay, and it it goes deeper than that. Not only is it very clear that the Packers are better protecting against the pass than they are protecting against the run. Now, that's both because of pass rush and because of the corners and safety, but that's irrelevant. The point is, where are the weaknesses? And the the answer is, when teams run the ball. Beyond that, though, as I've highlighted in the past, who are the teams that tore us up? Very largely, these are teams that get it done on the ground. The most embarrassing games that the Packers faced, three of which, three out of the four, have unbelievably talented offensive lines, And they run the ball very, very well. Twice against the 49ers, once against the Eagles. We were supposed to beat the Eagles, but you know what? We didn't. Do you know why? Because they have very good offense. They have a very good offensive line that dominated up front and won in the trenches, and they ran all over us. That has to stop. That has to be a priority. Drafting a corner, and again, I'm fine with it, and I understand Kevin King's coming up on a contract. It's not it's not a definite that he's staying in Green Bay after whatever. I tend to think he will because I think the the Packers do like him. Seems to have always been the case. But again, you add in the fact that we've got guys like Chandon Sullivan. You add in Josh Jones, who you can call him a bust if you want, but that's the verdict is still out on that. So we have Jair, we have Kevin King, we have Chandon Sullivan, we have Josh Jackson, 
If you look at DBs in general, we have Savage, we have Amos. When you look at linebackers, we have Christian Kirksey and Oren Burks. Kirksey and Berksey. Now, the other aspect of this is how much you, you know, so it's, it's how much you value the corners and how much you value the linebackers. I tend to come in a little bit lower on Kirksey than most. I know some of the people on Twitter you've probably heard are, are, are giving you the breakdown that when healthy, Kirksey's a great linebacker. And as I've told you, that's not true. The highest grade the guy has ever got was in 2015. His grade was a 69. Also, this idea that he's good in coverage. Apparently, there was somebody that had twisted things to such a distorted amount, like, you, you know, coverage grade while playing zone on third down, just nonsense. In in 2019, in the first two weeks, and, and by the way, this whole, well, when he's healthy, he was healthy in weeks one and two. Okay, so the idea that while he wasn't healthy in 2019, that's why he didn't play very well. No, he wasn't healthy starting in week three, that's why he didn't play. He was healthy in weeks one and two. Would you like to know what he did in coverage? Nine targets, eight receptions for 133 yards and a touchdown, 155.8 passer rating. That's how he started the season in 2019. Going backwards from that, week nine in 2018, four targets, four receptions, 105 yards and two touchdowns, 158.3 passer rating. The game before that, six targets, five receptions, 70 yards, 115.3 passer rating. Against Tampa, seven targets, three receptions, 27 yards and a pick. Great game. You know, so point is, he, he okay, so that that's one. You've also got seven targets, seven receptions, 58 yards. You got five targets, five receptions, 39 yards. You got five targets, four receptions, 73 yards. Overall, 2018. Again, this is what he got while he was on the field. 36 targets, 28 receptions, 372 yards, two touchdowns, two picks, two pass breakups, 105.1 passer rating. The year before that. When he was 1,068 total snaps in 2017, was he a, a dynamo? Was he a freak in coverage? Because this is what you're being told. 97 targets, 80 receptions. 82.5% of the times when he's targeted, it was caught. For 602 yards, he gave up five touchdowns, had zero interceptions, three pass breakups, 109.7 when targeted. 2016, the only other year in which he played significant snaps. 70 targets, 53 receptions. 501 yards, he gave up four touchdowns, didn't have a pick, and had four pass breakups, 114 uh, passer rating when targeted. Before that was 117. On his career, 77% of the time when he's targeted, it's caught. He's given up over 2,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, had two interceptions, both in 2018. So again, you go back, oh yeah, he had picks. Those are the only two of his entire career, and by the way, that was a year in which he was injured, so I thought those didn't count. 112.8 112.8 passer rating when targeted on his career. He hasn't had an above average passer rating since 20, or excuse me, an above average coverage grade since 2015. He hasn't graded out positively in any one category since 2017. So I, you know, I, I like Christian Kirksey as a guy. He seems like he wants to be here. Seems like a nice guy. All that stuff. The, the, the notion that we're going to be okay. Oren Burks is going to be this fast-flowing, shooting-in-the-backfield coverage guy. Christian Kirksey, you know, quote-unquote, win healthy. He's a great linebacker, especially in coverage, super athletic. All this is fantasy. We have a very, very serious problem up front against the run. Not against every team. The Vikings have a terrible offensive line. The Packers completely shut it down. But there are certain teams who by virtue of just being how good they are, the the guys up front in the trenches are so good, the Packers just can't handle it. And when the Packers' front gets overwhelmed, there's no help. There's no linebacker help. So am I on board with the notion that we need corners more than linebackers? I think that is... um, Let's be nice here. No. No, I don't think so. Of course, corner is more important. And if you want to look into the future... But even into the future... In the future, we might have a problem at corner. How about today and in the future, we have a problem at linebacker until we fix it. Today and forever until this gets fixed. So again, I'm not opposed. If we get a corner in the first round, I'm not super opposed to it. Although the improvement on the team is going to be minimal because who's he going to replace? Kevin King? How much better than Kevin King is he going to be? Marginally. Well, he'll play in the slot. Okay, Chandon was our, what did I say, our, our number one cornerback? Number two, maybe behind Tremont, he's going to be our slot guy. How much better is this guy going to be than Chandon? I'm guessing not very. And it's going to what? Marginally improve what we already do pretty well? We need to fix a problem. If you want to tell me that defensive line is more important, because it, fine, fine. 
you can make that case. I, I don't mind that argument, but we still need a capable linebacker, which we do not have. That has to happen at some point. There has to be somebody there that can help. Kirksey isn't it. Blake wasn't it. Burks is not it. There has to be a solution. And so again, going back to the question, you got on the same tier, fully acknowledging that corner in general is a more valuable position. You have two guys in this upper tier, a corner and a linebacker. I'm taking a linebacker, fully acknowledging that linebackers typically don't do very well in the first round. All the the top linebackers in the NFL, for the most part, are second-round picks. Almost all of them. All that. I don't care. I'm taking the top-tier linebacker over the top-tier corner because I want that fixed. The next time we play face the 49ers, the next time we face the Eagles, the next time we face one of these teams that is a ground and pound with a great offensive line that can manipulate our defensive line, I want to make sure we got a linebacker here that's going to blow that up. Now, again, if you're telling me that we got three guys in this tier, defensive tackle, linebacker, and corner, and you want to push for a defensive tackle, I'm not opposed to that. Don't have to worry as much about your linebacker when your defensive line isn't getting dominated, isn't getting pushed all over the field. Fine. Make that case. We'll get a linebacker a little later. We'll, in the second or third round, somewhere in there, we'll look for that. Corner? No. Again, if you do it, I, you know, it's fine. I'm going to be a little upset if it's a first-round pick, especially in a year in which corner... I mean, if this is a strong cornerback class, you could make an even better case for it. Because you could say, look, I mean, you're, you're, you're getting a rare corner to fall this far, which is why wide receiver makes so much sense. Because you're probably going to get more talent by the time you get to 30 than you otherwise would, because there's just so many. And you're, you're eventually going to come to teams that it's just like, you know, wide receivers may be the best value. We just don't need one. We, we just, it's not a, it's not a thing for us. And so value tends to fall. Same thing happened last year with pass rushers and defensive tackles, right? They, they were falling a little bit later than they would if they were the only defensive tackle or one of two or whatever. You've got one or two or maybe three corners that are even being talked about in the first round, none of them very early in the first round. Well, I shouldn't say that. Okuda, obviously. I forget about Okuda. Outside of Okuda, who's, you know, top five, there's just kind of a mishmash of late first round guys. So I, you know, I don't care if that's what you think. And I understand, again, I've made the case that cornerback is something the Packers are probably considering. But as far as biggest need or, or, or need more than linebacker, absolutely not. Defensive tackle, linebacker, wide receiver, tight end, offensive tackle, if I didn't say that, all bigger needs. Even if you tell me Tremont is not coming back, I, I'm still, when we're rolling with Kevin King, Jair, and uh, Chandon Sullivan, and Josh Jackson, sorry if I've said Josh Jones a couple times, I keep getting them confused. You know, considering what we've played with in the past, I just, I don't see that as a terrible group. Especially since I'm sure we're going to get at least one undrafted free agent that's pretty good, because that's just what the Packers do. Every year you got to get an undrafted free agent corner that's decent. It's just auto it's just automatic. So, no, I'm I'm good with mid to late rounds looking at a corner just because if it's the the top value, if he's just the best guy available, yeah, sure, whatever, I don't care. First second round? No, I I'm just I'm not I'm not interested in that. Again, take the best player available if that's what it is, that's what it is, fine, but I just I'm not on board with it. Anyways, I'm going to cut it off there. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I will work on Hopefully tomorrow, having uh, the, the names picked. Actually, I'll do one at a time, so I'll do one name. We'll work our way through it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for the support. And again, check out the the link in the description. It's ko-fi slash packdaddy or something. I don't know. Just check the link. Again, it's a way to do a one-time donation as, a, as opposed to this month-to-month stuff. Otherwise, you folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.